Welcome to this video on redundancy, coherence, and spatial contiguity principles, as discussed in the Cambridge Handbook of Multimedia Learning by Richard Mayer. As I mentioned, we're going to look at these three principles today and see how they affect or how they relate to cognitive load theory and the cognitive theory of multimedia learning. The first one we're going to look at is redundancy. And redundancy principle states that people learn more deeply from graphics and narration than from graphics, narration, and on-screen text. The picture I have here you may consider redundant where it says Pizza Hut. We have pizza underneath it in the message. And then the caption underneath says pizza, we have some. All of that in, in, incorporated with my, or in addition to my narration of saying, hey, Pizza Hut has pizza, they have some would contribute to a violation of the redundancy principle, and it's something we'd like to avoid. I have a video I'd like for you to watch next, and I want you to see if you can find examples of the redundancy principle being violated. We'll be right back. Check this out. It's important to be a great free throw shooter, not just if you're fouled, but so that you're on the court late in the game. The key to being a great free throw shooter is focus, balance, and consistency. If you're doing a free throw, it's really important to be calm and relaxed. It starts with your feet. Make sure you have good balance with your left foot as a righty, being halfway in between your right foot and then shoulder width apart. Legs are bent, shoulders are forward, wrist is behind the ball and caught. Raise the ball up slowly while keeping your legs down. And then with your eyes on the rim, power up and follow through holding your follow-through, and finishing on your toes. Okay, did you notice the redundancies in that video? First, we had the video of the shot mechanics, which was important. We had the description by the coach of the shot mechanics, which is also important. But then we had some closed captioning in there that even had some errors in it, and may or may not have been necessary depending on whether you were hearing impaired or not. And the last thing was the call-out arrows and how they were showing some obvious things about where his feet were and where the ball was. Uh, you may have also thought about the music uh, being really a, an extraneous, um, have an extraneous impact on the lesson that it really wasn't part of anything to do with learning how to shoot a free throw. So how would we fix that video if we were to redo that? Well, I think we would stick with the shot mechanics video because that was clearly important to see and the coach's description of the shot mechanics as he talked along with the video uh, but again the closed captioning completely unnecessary unless of course you were hearing impaired the call out arrows about the ball and the feet totally unnecessary and the music very unnecessary the next principle I want to look at is the coherence principle and this states that people learn more deeply from a multimedia message when extraneous material is excluded rather than included. So I want to talk to you about tigers here today. And, you know, when you take a course, you, you never know what you're going to learn, what other things you're going to learn. And in this course, I learned that tigers are not natively from Africa. They're not. Check it out. They're actually from Southeast Asia, which is where I went to go study tigers a number of years ago. And here you can see the map of Southeast Asia, and you can see the area of uh, where the Indo-Chinese tiger lives is the place that I really like to go. Um, there was a picture there of a tiger, Lucy, and um, she is really, really a nice, nice cat. Uh, was very playful, willing to um, pose for a lot of different pictures. And this was one I, I really thought was, was a, a stunning picture. And, you know, it, it, it's just really enjoyable to go to that part of the world and, and see tigers. Speaking of seeing tiger, man, I haven't seen tiger play golf in a long time. Uh, seems like between his physical injuries and some of his off the course uh, drama and uh, he's really had a tough last four or five years and I'm hoping to see him back on the tour pretty soon. Um, he was 
enjoyable to watch and with some of the young competition out there now I think would really would really add to some of the the drama and some of the the excitement of, of professional golf but anyway that's my talk about Tigers and uh, I hope you learned a lot about where they're from and and about um, you know the fact that, that they, they're very um, photogenic now clearly in that example um, there was a lot of extraneous incoherent material uh, that violated the coherence principle. I started off talking about the map and where tigers are from, um, talked about the, where they're not from, talked a little bit about the tiger there that's pictured and my experience allegedly taking that picture. But then I went off on a whole other tangent about tiger woods and golf and totally not necessary for, for, the, for the lesson about actual tigers. The last principle is the spatial contiguity principle. It states that people learn deeply from a multimedia message when corresponding words and pictures are posted near rather than far on the page or on the screen. So in this example, I have the water cycle, and the top example has, a, uh, has them separated, has the uh, terms in the description or the definition not together and it doesn't even really have them in the order that I think maybe you would you would look now that I think about look at the, where the condensation up in the top left it seems like that would be the first term but it's not evaporation is actually the first one defined and then condensation is next and then precipitation but it doesn't seem to line up as well plus the fact that the term and the definition are separated. The bottom example shows the term with its definition and it's a lot easier to see and it's a lot uh, more concise for the learner. I've got an example here where we've got the maple tree and the coconut tree and then I've got the words over here and there's all this black space right here which is this is not very complex but it still does not help make the message clearer. So how could I fix this? Easily I could put them larger images and I could put the text above each of them. So I decrease that space between the words and the pictures and it helps to create a, a more concise and a, and a much more easy, easier to understand visual. I hope this video helped you learn a little bit more about redundancy, coherence, and spatial contiguity principles. And as you develop content and instruction, that you'll think of these things so that when your learners use your materials, uh, it'll have a much greater impact on their learning and it'll be more enjoyable. Thank you.